The Arizona border this morning. And Steve, you just said something really compelling. You said you think that we could have a situation where somebody comes into this race on the Democratic side in the 11th hour. Maybe a Michelle Obama, maybe a Hillary Clinton, or maybe a Michael Bloomberg, you said. But is, is that, I mean, how would they do that? I, I, isn't it too late? Is it a, a money issue? No. No, first off, they'll, they'll all have tremendous resources in background. In fact, Bloomberg's committed $500 million already to the race. No, it's, it's before the primary season. And by the way, I think they can grind up the primary season and take you to a convention. Remember, the Democrats want to defeat Donald Trump. That is their focus. And to defeat Donald Trump, you've got to defeat him. He's the toughest candidate I've seen in my lifetime, tougher than Ronald Reagan. And so you're going to have to bring it. Like I keep saying, if you're going to beat Donald Trump, you've got to learn to hit a fastball. Mm. Don, uh, Joe Biden right now can, can, can hit change-ups. So I, I think there's a lot of intense, very smart people on the Democratic side are analyzing this field. And I just don't see this field right as of right now standing up to Donald Trump. Also, some of their policies and how they've abandoned previous policies to be so radical. Remember, what President Trump's trying to do on the border is all about the rule of law. I happen to think he's going to get 40 or 50 percent of the Hispanic vote in this country because they understand with what he's done with limiting illegal alien labor, it's made, it's, made, uh, it's made jobs. They've got lowest unemployment in 50 years. They've got wages coming up, et cetera. And so I think they see the rule of law and the breaking of the cartels. You're going to start to see the Hispanic vote change. And Democrats, this is not being lost in Democrats. Some of their radical policies like open borders, shutting down ICE, starting to dock the, dox the Border Patrol, uh, these are not going to be acceptable to the mainstream of the American people. Yeah, I mean, AOC said that she wanted to do away with the Homeland Security uh, Department altogether, which of course oversees ICE. In terms of the other policies, you've got Elizabeth Warren really wanting to take a knife to private equity, to big business. I mentioned that op-ed in the journal today, Elizabeth Warren, the vampire slave. Uh, are we setting ourselves up for socialism versus capitalism in 2020? Well, that's certainly, look, some of these policies are so off the chart. Look, I'm a populist and economic nationalist. Wall Street's got a lot to answer for, for the deindustrialization that the country's gone through, particularly the hedge funds and private equity and what happened in China. I know we'll get to that in a second. So Elizabeth Warren has kind of taken part of Donald Trump's really empowerment of economic nationalism, and she's taken it in a much more socialistic uh, way with her economic patriotism. But she's still, at the end of the day, I, I don't think she delivers the goods. I think it's, I think it amounts to happy talk. So I think Donald Trump's got working class people, people up in the upper Midwest, in uh, Western Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, Ohio. They know that Donald Trump is the first time they've had a voice in the room. You're not in the room. You're not in the deal. And Donald Trump has been their voice on China, on these trade issues, on doing a new NAFTA, mm -hmm. on starting to bring jobs back to the country, and particularly for low skilled workers and for manufacturing workers. I think they understand that Trump has their back, and the Democrats' policy get more and more radical as we go on. Uh, on China, the president suggested that maybe we will not see another uh